Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm so excited for this video because I am doing a life update, kind of a chit chat story time vlog and wishing you guys a happy 2017, which I hate that I don't get to do that until February. I can't believe I haven't filmed a single video in 2017. I've had major YouTube FOMO, but I just want to go ahead and explain everything that's been going on. If you follow me on other social media sites, you know that I broke my arm, my humerus right here, which is the bone that connects your shoulder to your elbow. I broke it the day after Christmas. I had to have surgery. I had a big metal plate put in with seven screws. It has not been the easiest start to a year for me, but I would love if you guys would go down to the comments below and tell me something good that has happened in your 2017. It can be anything. I just want to see what good has happened already for you in this year, and I will try to respond to as many comments as I can. I really have missed you guys so much, and I'm sorry it took me quite a while to get around to filming this video. A ton of people have been asking for a story time video telling you basically how I broke my arm and a life update, just what's going on with me. So I thought that would be a good video to start off this year. And then I have a lot of really exciting content coming this year. So I'm super excited to film those videos for you guys and put them up. So I think 2017 is going to be a really good year, even though it got off to a rocky start. So I'm going to start off by telling you guys how I broke my arm and tell you the full story of that and then go into a little bit of a life update. So if you're typically here for my beauty and fashion videos, this probably won't be your favorite video, but if you like my kind of like rambly chit chat vlogs, then this video is for you. I love filming these videos because I feel like I'm just sitting here talking to you guys. So these are some of my favorite videos to film, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you how I freaking broke my arm and it was the worst pain I've ever had in my entire life and I feel like I'm pretty good with pain like most of the time I can handle myself I was screaming at the top of my lungs in the middle of Central Park laying on the ice skating rink with my arm like deformed so on Christmas I got my little sister a trip to New York City she's never been before it's somewhere that she's always wanted to visit and so I invited my parents I invited Ellen Alex I said you know it's open to anyone and my mom was like you know what why don't you make this a trip with you and Jellybean that's not her real name by the way but that's what we call her um, she was like why don't you make this a trip with just you and jelly bean you guys have a really special bond and this will just be a fun trip for you guys so I was a little bit older when she was born I was nine almost ten years old when she was born so we didn't have the typical older younger sister relationship that you have if you're only like three or four years apart I was more like taking care of her and she has been my favorite human since the day that she was born I've just been obsessed with her so I wanted to share this experience with her and so I got her a little trip to New York just a girl's trip we were gonna go spend the day come back the same day it was gonna be a super quick trip but just a way for us to explore the city and we were gonna get in at 9 a.m. and leave at 9 p.m. so we had 12 hours in the city which is I feel like a lot for your first time and I had a ton of things planned we were gonna go ice skating in Central Park go to a Broadway show go to my favorite breakfast spot and I was just really excited I was also gonna take her on her first helicopter ride ever so she's never been in a helicopter before and I was so excited to see her face when she got to go up in a helicopter because it's a really cool experience it goes like straight up instead of like a plane that takes off it's just it's a cool thing to see and especially seeing Manhattan like that I thought that would be really fun for her so the morning of December 26 our flight left at 7 or 8 I don't remember but we had to leave our house at 3 a.m. because the airport is three hours away from our house in Tennessee so we were planning on getting up at like 2 going ahead getting in the car and driving so I went to sleep super early the night before and when we got up my dad was awake and he was like oh I want to drive you girls and we were like you don't have to do that that's like a six hour round trip drive and you're not even coming with us like that's insane and he was like yeah but the roads can be really icy and it's going through the mountains this time of year they're really foggy and it's going to be dark out so I would just feel better if you let me drive you and I was like that's fine with me like I'm gonna sleep in the front seat so um dad decided to drive us we stopped and got some egg muffins which are my favorite and then we were on our way to the airport we got there hugged dad goodbye 
and got on the plane and flew to New York. When we got to New York, we got to go in a helicopter from the airport that took us straight into the center of Manhattan. And I just wanna say that no matter what happened in this trip, um, later on in the day, obviously, I broke my arm, worst pain of my entire life. I would not trade it for anything. If I could redo it, I would do it 100 times over to see the look on her face when we were in that helicopter and just the experience that she got to have in New York. And she had a really good attitude about it. And she was like a freaking adult. She took charge when I got hurt. So I'm going to tell you guys all about it. But we got into the city and we were hungry. So I took her to Norma's, which is one of my favorite restaurants in the city. It's in the um, lobby of a hotel. I don't know exactly what one. I can't remember. But we went there. We had like a 10 minute wait before a table. So we just kind of hung out, took selfies. I was daily vlogging. And so we vlogged for a little bit. If you guys have a chance to go there, it is seriously the greatest restaurant. Jelly Bean says it's the best breakfast she's ever had in her entire life. So I would have to agree with her. It was so good. And especially that day, just having that day in the city. So then she wanted to go see Times Square. So we walked around Times Square for a little bit. We went to the Rockefeller Center. We were originally going to go ice skating at the Rockefeller Center, but it was way too crowded. The line was way too long. We didn't want to waste like four hours of our day in a line when we only had like 12 hours there. So we started walking around Fifth Avenue for a little while and then she wanted to see Central Park. So we went over to Central Park and we saw the ice rink at Central Park. And I was like, oh my gosh, we can go ice skating here. The line wasn't nearly as long. They were actually cleaning the ice at the time. So they were making it all extra smooth and slick for us. And so we had like a 15 minute wait and then they were gonna let the next batch of people onto the ice rink and you had like an hour or two hours to skate or something. So we were really excited. We rented a locker, put our shoes and purses in the locker. Um, I had the key in my pocket for the locker and we started ice skating around. The first couple times we were kind of like holding onto the edge and I just wanna preface this with I have gone ice skating every single winter for as long as I can remember. I've fallen quite a few times. I feel like almost every time I fall on my butt and everybody laughs and then I get back up and I keep going. So I wasn't really scared of falling, which I think might have been one of my biggest downfalls in this entire thing. I should have been a little more careful and a lot more scared, but I was like, whatever, I fall all the time. Like I just land on my butt, I get back up and that's how we do it. So we went skating around a few times, kind of holding on to the side. Then we like held hands and skated for a while. And we had been skating for maybe like 30 minutes and we had to get to a Broadway show. So I was like, do you think we should go ahead and like head over there? We can get a snack before we go in. And she was like, yeah, let's go around a few more times and then I'll be ready to go. And I was like, cool. Well, there was a lady who I swear was a professional ice skater. She was skating on the ice and she looked so cool. And you know how professional ice skaters, like they do that thing with their feet where they go like that. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so she was doing that. And I was like, I can do that. So I start skating around like that and I just was like everyone's looking at me and they think like I'm a professional ice skater too because I am but not really but like they don't know that and I was so proud of myself. So we're going around and Jellybean says she noticed that I was going like really fast but she was just like she can't be a better skater with me so she started going faster. So we're going around the ice rink and we had decided it was going to be our last loop around and I was three fourths of the way around so I only had one fourth of the ice rink to go before I got to the exit and we were going to go ahead and get a snack and then go to our Broadway show and I'm skating I'm doing my little whoosh 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 thing and I had it's weird to say that I had all of these thoughts happen in my head before I actually fell because it was only probably one or two seconds that I had to think, but it felt like time slowed down and I actually like had a conversation with myself about what I was gonna do. So I was skating and this little, like I'd say she's seven year old girl came in front of me and just stopped. And I had about one or two seconds to decide what I was gonna do. It was super crowded, so I wasn't really able to like go around her. So going around wasn't an option. Running into her was an option, but not one that I wanted to do because then I would take her down as well. And I would, I just remember thinking to myself, like I fall all the time when I'm ice skating and I get right back up. It's not that big of a deal. 
And so I remember that I decided I was going to fall backwards instead of forwards so that I wouldn't hit anybody else. And I went back and I remember that my hand, my right hand, is the first thing that hit the ice because I remember the cool. I had like little um, gloves on, but they were more like fashion gloves. They weren't actually like gloves for warm. And I remember feeling the cool through the gloves. And then I hear the biggest crack of my life and I think it's my head. So I'm laying there and I just remember this lady comes over and I can see her in my peripheral and she says, are you okay, honey? And I just remember saying no and starting to scream. So then Jellybean comes and she kneels next to me and she kind of like rubs my leg and she's like, boo boo, you're going to be fine. You got the wind knocked out of you. Like you're going to be okay. And I'm screaming bloody murder in the middle of Central Park. So a ton of people that worked at the ice rink came over and they did like a little human barricade. There were probably like eight of them that just surrounded me. And because I was laying on the ice so that other people couldn't like run into me or anything. And then they let the other people just keep skating around. Like people were skating all around us, but I had like this human barricade of just legs around me. So someone comes over, there's a lady and a man who come over and they say, you know, what hurts? And I just remember saying, my arm hurts, my arm hurts. And they asked Jellybean what happened. And she says, at one point I was completely airborne and a couple other people that were around when this happened said the same thing. My feet came up and out from under me. And so there was a period of time where nothing was touching the ground. So put my body weight on top of gravity and that's how hard I came down on my hand which slid out from under me like this because remember I wasn't landing on like carpet or wood or concrete I was landing on ice so when I landed my hand slipped and I came down on my elbow my entire body weight came down on my elbow and it cracked this bone right here if I would have just landed on my wrist they said that the break probably would have been in one of these two bones right here, which wouldn't have been as bad. But because my actual weight came down on my elbow, that is why it cracked my humerus. But we didn't know this at the time. So I remember them telling me, I think you dislocated your shoulder. We need to pop it back into place. It's going to hurt really badly, but then the pain will be gone. Like once it's back into place, you will be able to make it to your Broadway show because they were trying to keep my mind off it. And they were like, what are you doing later? You know, while they were trying to look at it. And I was just screaming and Jellybean was like we're going to a Broadway show like all cheery like everything's still gonna be fine and I didn't black out but at the same time it's a little bit like right after it happened is a little bit fuzzy I don't remember when I realized that it was my arm hurting and not my head because I thought the crack was my head and so I guess the noise happened right around the time that my head hit the ice because my head did hit the ice but I don't remember when I realized it was actually my arm that was hurting and they kept telling me that it was my shoulder and I couldn't feel anything really from my shoulder down except for pain and I remember thinking that when Bethany Hamilton got her arm bit off by a shark she didn't cry until she got to the hospital and I kept thinking adrenaline's gonna kick in and I'm gonna stop crying and it didn't happen and that was hard because I kept thinking like adrenaline's gonna kick in like you're gonna feel fine in a second just get through these next five seconds I would count to five no adrenaline still screaming still sobbing so they asked Jellybean if she knows where my shoes are and she says yeah so she gets the key out of my jacket pocket and they say okay go ahead and go get her shoes put your own shoes on and then meet us at the entrance we're gonna bring a stretcher out and roll her out to that entrance and we'll meet you right there so Jellybean like took control she went she got her skates off put her shoes on grabbed both of our purses we had also bought two pairs of spectacle sunglasses for my dad and one of her friends so like she had her arms full and she was walking back out and in the meantime they were trying to get me on the stretcher but every time they tried to pick me up I just screamed and they were like okay we're not going to be able to move her so they called 911 for an ambulance and I feel like that's supposed to come pretty quickly like if you're in the middle of having a heart attack and you call an ambulance I feel like you think like oh they're going to be here any minute it took them a lot of minutes I'm just going to say and maybe they told them like we think she dislocated her shoulder or broke her arm or something so they weren't like putting the sirens on and like, go, go, go. But they definitely weren't go, go, going to get me. They were just kind of like, 
drive in like oh we'll get there in the meantime i'm laying on the ice and my pants are starting to soak through and i'm starting to shiver and i don't even care like i feel the cold and i feel that my teeth are chattering and stuff but all i can feel really is my arm so the man um that was like leaning down helping me took his jacket off and laid it over top of me and then a couple other people like repeated this and like random people were just giving me their jacket and i remember thinking my upper body isn't what's cold it's what's actually touching the ice and they can't lift me to put it up under me so there's no point in these people being cold because this isn't really going to warm me up and I just remember being like no I don't want your jacket and they were just trying to be helpful but I couldn't say what I meant like no it's like it's under me that's freezing it's not this so you stay warm I probably just sounded like a little bit of a biatch because I was like no I don't want your jacket um but I was just I felt bad for them taking it off and then um, I realized it's been about 10 minutes and Jellybean isn't back. And so I'm like, where's my sister? And they were like, oh, she was waiting for you because we were going to put you on the stretcher and take you over there. But now we can't get you on the stretcher. And I was like, okay, well, can she come back out here? And they were like, yeah, okay, I'll go get her. Apparently she had tried to walk back out to me, but they told her she wasn't allowed to because she had... Um, normal shoes on she didn't have ice skates on she was like I know but my sister's over there like dying screaming you hear that ear piercing sound you guys think I have an annoying voice right now wait until I start screeching like it sounded like a pterodactyl was dying and that was just me screaming and crying so jellybean comes back out she bends down next to me and she's like you're gonna be totally fine we're still gonna make it to our broadway show like i'm so sorry this happened we'll touch up your makeup we'll go to a mat counter like you're fine and i'm just here like i am not fine so she's like should we call mom while we wait and i'm like yeah so she calls mom and i just remember she was like hey mom like super casual and mom was like hey how are you girls doing she's like fine we're waiting on an ambulance because Boo Boo fell. That's what she's called me her whole life. Uh, Boo Boo fell. And so we think she dislocated her shoulder or broke her arm or something. But they say we're still going to make our Broadway show. So we're going to be totally fine. Um, but I just wanted to let you know, in case somebody calls you, that that is us in the ambulance. But everything's totally fine. And then she hung up. And I remember being like, why did you tell mom that everything was fine? Everything is not fine. And she was like, yeah, it is. You're fine. She was staying so calm and looking back on it she was just being so brave being the adult in the situation because later on like I saw how scared she actually was and she was so calm and I've never been more proud of her if I was 14 and I was in the city with Elle and something happened I'd be like losing our purses and I'd have one shoe on and she was like People take advantage of people in situations like that. They see a young girl holding on to two purses. They think it'd be easy to be like, here, let me help you take a purse. She was like, no, I've got them both. Like thinking of things that my 23 year old mind doesn't even think of. So she's next to me and it's been about 20 minutes and we're still waiting on the ambulance. The entire back of my pants is soaked through because I was wearing jeans, but then I had like a sweater and a jacket and a scarf on. So it was hard. They couldn't even see what was going on. Um, but like my upper body, the back of my upper body was fine. It was just my pants were completely soaking wet and freezing. So the ambulance gets there. Oh, this is another part. It starts to rain. So I'm laying there with my face up to the sky and I try to like turn my head and everyone's like, no, don't move your neck. But I'm laying there and it's just hitting me and about 60 seconds pass and I realized like no one's gonna like go get an umbrella or anything. So finally I was like, do you guys think you could get an umbrella? Cause it felt like Chinese water torture. Like raindrops were just coming down on my face. And I was just like, I like nothing else can happen right now that would be worse than this basically. So they go, they get me an umbrella, and then about five minutes after that, I would say that is when the ambulance showed up. They came over, they brought a stretcher out, two EMTs were there. They were asking me, you know, what's going on? And I remember them trying to move me onto the stretcher, and I was screaming. And I remember looking at one of them, and he looked at the other one and said, we just have to do it. It's going to hurt. She's going to scream. We have to do it. And I was like, no, we don't. No, we don't have to do it. No, we don't have to do it. You know, for not now. Like, I've been down for a while. I'm doing fine. Like, just leave me. And they were like, no, you don't want that. And I was like, I know. I need to, like, go somewhere. So they wrapped, like, a sheet up under me and then picked up each side of the sheet and put me on the, um, 
stretcher and I remember just screaming bloody murder. They roll me off the ice and then into the ambulance and Jelly Bean gets in the ambulance and I look at her and she's looking around and she's like, this is so cool. My first time in New York, my first helicopter ride, my first ambulance ride, like this is cool boo boo. And I was just like, you have got to be kidding me. I'm still screaming, like intermittently screaming and sobbing. So he starts driving and he's like, do you guys want the lights on? Typically, I guess they only put the ambulance lights on if it's something like, it's a big life-threatening emergency. Otherwise they just like drive like normal. Um, and I was like, yes! And Jellybean was like, yeah! So they put the lights on, we go like speeding down the streets, which never happens in New York. And we get to the hospital and they roll me in. And I remember the first nurse that came over to me, I just remember her looking down at me and kind of like rubbing this arm and just telling me it's gonna be okay. And she had a really pretty smile. And I just remember thinking like, her teeth are so pretty, her smile's so pretty. Like that's all I could concentrate on. And so they were like, we're gonna, you know, need to cut your clothes off. And I was like, that's fine. So they cut my, well, they like kind of put my scarf to the other side and then they cut my jacket and my gloves because my gloves were kind of like high so they couldn't really pull them off so they cut my gloves my jacket and my sweater all the way up to here and I remember trying to look at it and the nurse with a pretty smile like turned my head like this and was like you don't need to look at it right now and oh when they put me on the stretcher also um I couldn't this is gonna be a super long video I hope you guys are enjoying it if you made it to this point comment something about unicorns in the comments um anyways so I remember when they first put me on the stretcher, I remember asking where my arm was and they were like, it's right here. And I was like, no, where is it? And they were like, it's right here. I couldn't feel because when I landed, my arm was laying behind me. So I was laying on my arm this entire time. And then I guess somehow, I don't remember when in the middle of my screaming, they somehow got my arm secured in front of me. So I didn't like feel it myself laying on it and I just thought my arm had fallen off or something like I was convinced it wasn't attached anymore and they were like no it's up here so anyways the nurse with the pretty smile was like no don't look and I'm like is it that bad it has it um they said something about there's a lot of blood and I'm like there's blood and I look over and I see my arm and I'll put a picture here but my arm went like this and then out to my elbow like it went this way and I was like wait I don't see any blood and they were like no just a lot of like bruising is forming up underneath and I was like oh okay I thought my bone like popped out and they were like no luckily that didn't happen and I was like yeah luckily nothing is lucky right now nothing is lucky right now so they're like we're gonna have to get some um x-rays and you're gonna be fine and I was like well like, am I going to get a cast? What is this? And they were like, no, we have some of the best orthopedic surgeons. It's a little deformed, but I promise they'll make it look good. And I was like, what? Like this whole time, I still thought if it was a broken arm, not a dislocated shoulder, that I would just get a cast and be fine. But it, that wasn't the case. Apparently this is like a bigger break than normal. Where it broke is exactly where the radial nerve goes through that section of your arm. So they were scared that, you know, because of the way it broke, it could have clipped the radial nerve and that is what controls your movement in your entire arm. So if it had done anything, I could be paralyzed in my arm forever. So they were like, we need to make sure that, you know, this is like a little more serious than just a normal broken arm. And I was like, okay, I was still crying. I remember they started an IV and I don't like IVs and my veins always roll. And I remember that they were like, um, you know, we're going to do the IV now. And I just remember being like, okay, like I just let them do it, which typically I'm very like, okay, like let's count down. Let's tell a story. Like, what are you doing? Like, how has your day been though? Like, are you sure you're ready for this? But I was just like, yeah, okay, do it. They gave me morphine. Didn't help at all. They gave me more morphine. Didn't help at all. Apparently they gave me the maximum dose before I started like, calming down and not hyperventilating and they were like you have to breathe normally they gave me oxygen and stuff but I was still just like hyperventilating and so this was a teaching hospital so the resident came in and um 
he was, he had like his little, or the attending came in and he had his residence with him. And I was like, apparently he was like, I'm the orthopedic surgeon. And this was right when the morphine was starting to hit. And I was like, I asked for Cali Torres. And then any Grey's Anatomy fans out there will appreciate that. And they were like, no, you get me. Like I'm the, I'm the orthopedic surgeon here on call right now. And I was like, Jellybean, show them a picture of Cali so that they can make sure that Cali's here. So I made Jellybean pull up a photo of Cali Torres on her phone and show them. And they were just like, okay, we'll, we'll go look for her. So this whole time I was under the impression that Cali Allie Torres was going to be my orthopedic surgeon, in which case I was going to be fine with it. But she never showed up and I was a little bit disappointed. Like I remember being like, I'm so like, they told me that they would go get her and she didn't come, which, you know, I was kind of like drugged up. So I don't really think that you can blame me for that. So they came back in and I remember they were like, okay, I want you to sit on the edge of the chair and lean forward and we're going to have gravity help straighten out this arm and I'm going to push the bone back together and then we're going to cast it. And I was like, okay, but how am I going to be sitting up leaning forward if I'm going to be asleep? And he was like, oh, we're not putting you to sleep now. And I remember being like, you just said I was going to sleep. And he was like, yeah, but we really need gravity to help. Basically, I leaned forward. He started pulling on my arm. He started dripping sweat. That's how hard it was to like maneuver my bones and get them back in the right place. He would do it and then bring this little x-ray machine over, take an x-ray, move it a little more. And I was screaming so loud. Jellybean says she's never heard someone scream that loud. Like the screaming I was doing when I was on the ice was nothing compared to the pterodactyl shrieks that were coming out of me. I was kicking, I was hyperventilating, like not kicking anyone. My legs were just like going out. I was just like in so much pain. And it took like, I think 15 minutes for him to sit the bone, set the bone. And I was on a lot of painkillers. So the fact that I was still screaming like that is like, that was really painful. And the orthopedic surgeon, when I got back and went to my dad's orthopedic surgeon, he thought it had happened two days before because he thought I was put to sleep to have it set and then flown back the next day. And I was like, no, it happened yesterday. Like this happened last night. And he was like, well, how did you get on a plane so quickly? And I was like, I just left the hospital and went. And he was like, did they not put you to sleep? And I was like, no. And he was like, I would have never in a million years done that without putting you to sleep. Like that has got to be the worst pain. And if you can get through that, childbirth is going to be fairly easy. And I was like, well, that's cool for like my future kids, you know, just going to like pop them out, maybe sneeze, do a little, oh, they'll just like fly out. I'm sorry, Teddy, that scared him. Um, so he sets the bone. I remember, oh, another thing is I had told them I was still shivering and they were putting heating blankets on me. And I was like, I don't think it's going to help until I get my pants off. And they were like, why? And I was like, because they're wet. And I remember the nurse with the pretty smile was like, oh my gosh, honey, it's okay. Like we can, we can get you hooked up with a catheter. Like we'll take your pants off. And I was like, no, I didn't pee my pants. Like my, my, I was laying on the ice for 30 minutes and she was like, oh, okay. Well, do you still want a catheter? Cause it's okay. And I was like, no, I can hold my bladder. I just want to get out of these wet pants. So, um, got out of the pants. And then I remember at one point Jellybean was in the room and I needed something from the nurse. And I remember asking her to go get the nurse with the pretty smile. Remember I was like kind of Looney Tunes at this point. And she was like, which one's that? And I was like, just go out there, look around. Remember this is an emergency room in New York city. Like there are a ton of nurses. I was like, look around, just find the one with the pretty smile and just bring her back to me. And she was like, okay. And she went and she brought the nurse with a pretty smile back to me. She was like, I just walked around until I found her. I was like, okay. Like when I came to, and I was like normal, I was like, wow, she really did have a pretty smile. I wish I could find her too. Also the guy that helped me on the ice rink and the nurse with a pretty smile, because I would tell them like how much I just appreciate everything. Um, and she really did make me feel better. So got the arm set, they gave me a painkiller prescription and told me to go to Dwayne Reed, which was right across the street, and pick up my painkillers before I try to take the flight back. So we go, we pick that up as well as like some drinks and a couple snacks and stuff. And then we get an Uber. It's raining, by the way. We get an Uber and my cast was like this thick. I'll put a picture to show you, but like from the back, it was like this wide. It was a huge cast because they had to make sure that that bone didn't move. So um, 
it was raining and we had walked over to Dwayne Reed, then we got in an Uber, we went to the airport. Luckily, we were fortunate enough to be flying private, so we just went into the terminal. There's no security to go through or anything like that. You don't really even have to check in. You just kind of go in and sit and they come up and they're like, what flight are you for? What's the tail number? So then when we were ready to go, our flight was delayed a little, a little bit, but that was fine because, um, you know, we were just hanging out anyways and I kind of needed more time. I remember going to the bathroom and I couldn't button my pants back up and I just started crying in the bathroom and this random lady in the airport um, who was waiting for her own flight, she was like, can I help you? And I was like, can you button my pants? And she was like, yeah. <laughs> I was still probably a little loopy because I was just like crying and then I came out and Jellybean was like, what's wrong? And I was like, I just couldn't button my pants. And then we got on the flight. The flight back was super, super easy. And we were supposed to have a helicopter from the city back to the airport, but weather conditions said that like they weren't flying any more helicopters that night. So that's why we took an Uber and the Uber ride was about an hour long. So that was like a long time to get to the airport in the car, like every bump we hit, I would scream. And then the flight was pretty good. When we got there, my dad was waiting for us in Greensboro to drive us back. And by this point, I feel like I had been awake for a long time. And I had also, why are you snorting? Okay. Teddy likes to make little noises sometimes. So we get back to Tennessee that night. Elle and Alex are waiting and I walk in and I remember Elle being like, well, you did always want a broken arm because when I was little, I used to always say like, I wish I could break my arm so I could have a cast that my friends could sign. And she was like, you did always want it. And I remember just looking at her and being like, I know that's why I like can't really even be mad because I finally got it. But the cast they gave me was just wrapped in like this nude ace bandage and I remember asking them if they had like matte black because I really wanted a matte black cast so people could sign it with like um, metallic sharpies and they were like no like this is what it's going to be wrapped with and I was like okay so the next morning I woke up I went to the orthopedic surgeon that's where he was like I would have never reset your bone without putting you to sleep like that must have been the worst pain ever the orthopedic surgeon looks at it he says we're gonna let it sit in the cast for a couple weeks if it's not healing then we're gonna have to go in and do surgery because basically the way I cut or the way I broke it they cut the bone straight across so there was only a quarter size for the bone to realign and fuse back together and it could only be about 15 to 20 degrees off. So he was like if it had broken like down at a diagonal it would have a lot of surface space to try to fuse back together and callus over but because it broke right there it's going to be pretty difficult. And so we waited for the two weeks, worst two weeks ever. Um, this video is getting so long, I'm sorry, but we waited for the two weeks and then we went in, got another x-ray and the bone was trying to heal, but at an angle where when he took the cast off, um, my arm still kind of looked deformed. So it was going to heal at like an angle. So my arm still would have that bend in it a little bit. And he was like, you know, if we go in and have the surgery, cosmetically, you're either going to have the scar on the back of your arm or the bend in your arm. So it's really up to you like which one you want. And I decided to go ahead and have the surgery, have them put the metal plate in so my arm would be completely straight. I wouldn't have some weird like Looney Tunes bend in it. And I just knew that like scar healing, like all the creams you can put on and the laser treatments, like I'm really not worried about it, even though it is like this long, like it's the entire length of my arm. So I had that surgery about two or three weeks after I broke it, still in Tennessee. Um, I couldn't do anything with my right arm. My right arm was completely useless. My right hand was kind of like in this cast in a set angle. So I couldn't even like use my thumb to type. I was doing everything with my left hand. Um, I remember I tweeted the first day I opened a mouthwash bottle because like most things you can open with one hand you can like hold it between your legs or something but because the mouthwash bottle has that like child safety thing it was hard for me just to like get a good grip and open it and I remember the day I did that was like two weeks after and I was like this is progress. Now I have curled my hair twice since this happened. I curled it this morning and I curled it the morning of the Super Bowl. So I can touch my head. I can almost straighten my arm all the way. So I don't know if you guys can see, there's still a little bit of 
a bend in it, but not too much. So that's as far as I can straighten it. When I first came home from Tennessee and I started physical therapy, I could get it. This is how it was like just in a normal, like resting position right here. I could get it from here to about here and about, I'd say maybe there. And now I can get it to here and to there. So it's almost straight. And I've been doing physical therapy multiple times every single day and really working on that. Um, and yeah, obviously there's a lot more that goes into um, the story, but this was just kind of like a really long version of everything that happened. Um, but there's even more that I could keep going, but I feel like you guys might get bored with it because it's like, you know, this was more just me healing. And Teddy, what are you doing? Does your dog ever do that? Just like rub his face and his ears and his body just like around. He does it on carpet too. You're so funny. I don't know if you guys can hear him snorting, but he's like a little pig and his little tail, little tail stump is so cute. Oh, I was pointing at your tail, not your face. Okay, hello. Mochi's downstairs playing somewhere. I honestly don't know where he was. He was in my feet when I started the video, but he's gone now. So that is the story of my arm. I have healed really well, but just doing anything, even like brushing my teeth was tough. My skin got really bad because I obviously wasn't paying attention to my skincare routine and like putting my moisturizer and doing my masks. Like I could care less about that. So my skin got really bad. I came back to LA and I'll, I'll do like a super quick life update for you guys. Um, I got my dogs back, which I was really excited about because even when I went on the amazing race with my dad, we were only gone for 28 days. And so I had to leave Teddy for 28 days, but this was a month and I didn't have like, when you're on the race, so many things are going on. You're not really worrying about like home or your dog or anything, but I was just laying in bed all day and all I wanted was Teddy and Mochi. So I came back here, I got them, I healed up here for a little while longer. Even when I came back, I was just starting to be able to like wash my own hair and do things for myself. Um, I still can't do anything, like I can't hold anything in this hand, anything with weight, because even though the bone is screwed like to where it's forced to be together, it hasn't actually healed all the way yet. So anything that would kind of like pull it apart, I guess is bad and it would hurt. So I can't like open or close doors with this hand. I can't hold anything, but I can use it. Like I can use my finger or my hands to text. I can like eat again with it. Um, I curled my hair today. I've been able to shave with my right hand, which was a big deal because I was shaving with my left hand. Um, so shave, shampoo, conditioner, I'm able to do all of that. I've started my face routine back up again and my skin is still not like to where it was. I had gotten my skin really good before the holidays and I was really proud of it. It's still not to where it was, but um, I'm definitely working on my skincare. And I, this is like a whole video in and of itself, but I said I would do a life update and I'm just gonna leave you guys with this. Um, I got a loft in LA. So I am moving back to LA. I'm still gonna keep this house. So this house is like my dream house. I absolutely love it. I've only had it for a year and it's already proved to be a really good investment. Um, so I'm definitely keeping it. I'm gonna let the value appreciate a little while longer, but I'm just ready to be back in LA. I kind of had my suburban year where I came out here and it was nice to get away from all the craziness of LA, but I also missed out on a lot of things. Like I thought, oh, if I ever wanna do anything with people, like I can drive up, I have friends up there I can stay with, I have my boyfriend up there. And I was like, you know, I can definitely drive up there, but having the two dogs, taking them, it's just nicer to have my own place. So I got a one bedroom loft in LA that I'm gonna be staying at most of the time, but I still have this house, obviously, if I wanna stay here. And I like that it's in the same neighborhood as Ellen Alex. So sometimes we'll have game nights on the weekend so we can come and spend a weekend here and, um, yeah, like I said, it's been a really great investment. So I'm very fortunate and happy that I have this house, but I also want to have a place in LA where I'm kind of back with my friends. You know, I was able, if people would invite me like to a birthday party on the weekend, I was able to plan for that and get there. But if someone was just like, hey, what are you doing? Like, want to go get our nails done today? It was too far for me to drive because I'm about an hour outside of the city. So um, this is kind of the best of both worlds. Like, I have my 
house and then I'm going to have a place to stay in LA, which I'm really excited about. And I'm so excited to do a loft tour for you guys. It is the coolest space. It's somewhere that I probably won't ever live again because I feel like the next home that I actually like buy will probably be with my like husband and we're going to want to have like rooms for kids and stuff like I'm talking about in the future obviously but I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to just have like this open loft again so the only doors are to the bathroom and the closet other than that it's completely open and I love it um so yeah surprise I'm moving again well like halfway moving so I'm keeping a lot of stuff here like I'm still going to have a lot of my furniture here and stuff because it's only a one bedroom that I have to furnish over there I'm really excited because it's going to be a little bit of a different style. My house here is a lot more traditional, whereas this is going to be a little more like industrial, mid-century, modern, eclectic, a little bohemian. So I'm really excited about it. But this has been a crazy long video. If you guys are still watching, you're the real MVP. Just got to say, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and I am going to be back with more videos. So if you have any video requests that you would like me to film, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I'm still going to be giving you guys a tour of this house as well as a tour of the new loft. Like that kind of home decor series is still happening because I still have this house. I still love it. Things are staying like pretty much the same. I might take some stuff over to the loft from here, but for the most part, I'm getting stuff for over there. Um, so yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I know it was a long one, but I feel like a lot had to be said and that's like my story time, chit chat, life update, everything else is going great in my life. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys are having a great 2017 and I think this year is going to be really fun for us. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.